Welcome back to the Warehouse Podcast. My name is Jesse. The Orioles have officially taken two out of three from the Arizona Diamondbacks, so I will be talking about that series. Before we get into the episode, just want to say that Bet Online is the number one source for all your summer sports this season from MLB, golf, NBA, and NHL playoff stats. All the latest stats, news, and scores available to follow your favorite teams. Get the latest odds and lines, including the latest team matchups, player props, and odds on just about every sport out there. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to get in on the action. Bet online is where the game starts. All right. So coming into this series against the Arizona Diamondbacks, the Orioles were probably looking to at least at a bare minimum win two out of three uh, and best case scenario to sweep the series. Uh, The Diamondbacks, uh, despite having gone to the World Series last year um, and having a lot of talent up and down this roster, uh, so far have started the season off not to expectations. Uh, They came into the series against the Orioles under 500. So I think the Orioles were probably thinking, okay, Worst case, quote unquote, worst case scenario, uh, we're going to take two out of three at home against this team. Um, And best case scenario, we sweep the series um, with the obvious objective of probably sweeping this series. Um, Of course, uh, the Orioles are probably trying to sweep every series. But if you're playing against a really good team, maybe in a four game set on the road, maybe that's not possible. So you, you're you sort of shooting for three out of four in that situation. Um, but in this situation, given that it's the Diamondbacks, I think the Orioles were uh, Brandon Hyde uh, going into this series was probably hoping to take all three. Um, but the Orioles are going to have to settle for only winning two out of the three. Um, so basically, uh, yeah, the O's won the first two, dropped the third game. Uh, so I'll just sort of get into the get into recapping uh, a bit of, a bit about the games here. So in game one, uh, Cole Irvin was the starting pitcher for the Orioles, and he continued his really strong string of starts. He went five and two thirds. He allowed two runs. Um, he allowed one on a Cattell Marte solo home run. Um, in the third inning, uh, and then he uh, left uh, Lourdes Gurriel Jr. on base. Albert Suarez came into the game in the middle of the sixth inning, um, and Albert Suarez ended up allowing Gurriel Jr. to score. Uh, so that ended up uh, coming on a Eugenio Suarez single. Um, of course, no relation to Albert Suarez. Um, and that run was charged to Cole Irvin. Um, so uh, in the seventh inning, uh, Brandon Hyde uh, clearly read and took direction from uh, the Warehouse Podcast Twitter. Um, just the idea of putting Craig Kimbrell that we had presented in lower level, lower leverage uh, situations. Um, and it wasn't it wasn't a meaningless. It wasn't a blowout at that point there you know, there was probably still uh, some intensity associated with the moment because it was still a close game at that point. Uh, But Brandon Hyde brought Craig Kimbrell into the seventh inning. He did pitch a successful scoreless seventh inning. Um, And then in the ninth, uh, Yenier Cano did lock down the save uh, after allowing a hit and the Orioles ended up winning four to two. Uh, so the offense uh, did uh, sort of sp- uh, share in the workload a bit uh, off Brandon Pifot, um, who, of course, we saw uh, as many of these guys on this Diamondbacks roster uh, was was a, a big part of the World Series run uh, for the Diamondbacks last year. Um, so Westberg uh, in the second inning doubled to score Ryan Mountcastle. And then later in that inning, uh, Cedric Mullins grounded out to second uh, to score Anthony Santander. Um, and then uh, in the fifth, O'Hearn singled to score Rutschman. And in the seventh, uh, the O's added an insurance run uh, to score uh, Mateo uh, when uh, Gunnar Henderson hit a double. So 
Um, basically, uh, it was it was a good game, a very complete game for the Orioles. Uh, we did enough offensively, um, put up the four runs, good starting pitching. The bullpen did their job. Um, so all around, it was a good win. Uh, yeah, and just to clarify, when um, Kimbrel uh, had come in in the seventh, at that point, uh, it was a 3-2 game. Uh, the O's were winning. Um, and it was only, uh, like I said, in the seventh when the Orioles added the insurance run to make it four to two, which was the eventual eventual uh, result of the game. Uh, so in game two, uh, it was it was a lot closer. Um, well, it wasn't a lot closer, but it was closer, it was more competitive. Um, uh, game one, I mean, it was it was close. It was competitive. If things had gone differently, the Diamondbacks could have came away with a win in that game. But the Diamondbacks definitely had uh, their chances in this game. Um, so uh, basically, uh, John Means did not have a good a good start. Uh, he had to exit early in the fifth inning after allowing four runs on six hits. Uh, the Orioles were down four to two early in the game. Uh, but Gunnar Henderson uh, homered in the fifth inning to make it four to three. Uh, we've come to expect that from him uh, just about every series or so. Uh, we can expect a Gunnar Henderson home run, it feels like. Um, and then he made it four to three. Uh, and then in the bottom of the eighth inning, Anthony Santander came up uh, and, of course, uh, replicated what Henderson did. He hit a home run uh, himself, uh, which tied it four to four. Um, so the game ended up holding there. It went to extra innings um, in the bottom of the 10th. It looked like the O's had a good chance to win the game. They had the bases loaded with one out and with Colton Kowser up. That's a pretty favorable situation for the Orioles. But Colton Kowser didn't get the job done. He grounded into a rally killing inning ending double play. Fortunately, uh, the two relievers that we had, uh, which I'll talk about, Really did a great job in extra innings, not allowing the runner that started on second base to score. So in the bottom of the 11th, the Orioles came up to bat with another chance to win it, and they didn't waste any time. Jordan Westberg was the first hitter up with Colton Kowser on second base, and Westberg hit a single, and the Orioles won 5-4. to four. So Danny Coulomb pitched a 10th inning, walking around the runner placed on second, uh, and Kimbrell pitched a scoreless 11th. Also walking, uh, working around the runner at second, uh, but also uh, he hit a batter, hit Christian Walker uh, in the 11th too. And they were both able to sort of work out of those uh, mini jams, I guess, that they inherited. So the Orioles, it was a close game. Uh, they were fortunate in some ways to get uh, fantastic pitching. Uh, from uh, in particular Coulomb and in particular Kimbrell, but the entire bullpen in that game did a really great job. So the Orioles walked away winning that game five to four as well. Um, and then in game three, things were a little bit different. The Diamondbacks probably, uh, well, Diamondbacks had gotten uh, the rough end of two very close, very competitive games where they were right there and, and in the game the whole time. Uh, the Orioles didn't blow them out in either game or run away with it. Um, so, But in game three, the O's just were rough, um, and the Diamondbacks did end up getting a blowout win. Uh, it was a game that got away from the Orioles, mainly in the sixth inning, uh, when the O's allowed a six spot just after being down three to two, it was very close until that point. But those allowed six runs in the sixth inning, uh, despite, you know, what it, the score looks like. Uh, Dean Kramer actually pitched pretty well. Um, he had 10 strikeouts. His stuff looked really good, as it has been recently. Um, so he did a really good job. Uh, he made a throwing air in the fourth inning that allowed to be uh, that allowed a run to be scored um on a sack fly by Christian Walker um and then in the 5th inning uh he got into some trouble and Ramon Arias made a bad throw to home trying to cut down the run with the bases loaded um and uh it was not on target McCann couldn't hold home plate keep his foot on home plate 
um and and an heir was charged to arias because of that uh because of the throwing heir so uh some unfortunate stuff i mean i know kramer was you know is responsible for his own errors that he commits as a pitcher um but had some unfortunate things um and then in that like i said in that sixth inning um he was struggling a bit and then um cnl perez came in after him um and just yeah compounded the situation made things worse they got um two outs early in that sixth inning and just like that third out was completely elusive batters came up uh like over and over could not get that final out um and the Orioles ended up being down nine to two at that point after that sixth inning. Uh, and even though uh, Adley Rutschman and the O's responded with a solo home run in the bottom of the ha- bottom half of that sixth inning, um, it was not nearly enough. Uh, it it did not spark a major comeback uh, on behalf of the Orioles offense. Um, and the Orioles ended up dropping that game nine to two. So that was a rather unfortunate game. Uh, yeah, it would have been really nice to have won that that last and final one, uh, especially it would have been nice if the Orioles had been able to get some offense going in that game. Uh, I mean, we were hitting against Zach Gallen in that game. Uh, he, he is, you know, the best pitcher, I would say, on that Diamondback staff. Um, so and he had, of course, a very good year last year. Um, and stuff like that. So Zach Gallen is very good, but we were not able to get to him. Um, it was sort of disappointing. The O's weren't able to find a way to sweep as we were probably hoping coming into the series. Um, but overall, uh, for the most part, it was a pretty well-played series on the Orioles part. Um, it could have gone the other way. We could have lost two out of three in this series. Um, I mean, in a really bad world we could have lost all three potentially but um more realistically uh it would have been possible for us to have lost two out of three but we didn't and we uh survived extra innings um we were able to find a way to win in game two and uh the orioles uh sort of are you know showing that they're this very sort of steady consistent team right i mean we're of course we're not getting swept uh, that's sort of the big thing that everyone's talked about. Um, but uh, other than that athletic series, uh, we are winning series. And uh, that is really good to see. Um, so this team is just progressing uh, well, at least at this point, to its uh, hopeful playoff destination. Just some takeaways uh, from this game. Uh, what I would say, uh, so... Big takeaway, uh, I think, for me, um, is that, uh, well, let me start with actually the Orioles MVP. Um, Let me start with that. So uh, for this series, I'm going to give it to Jordan Westberg. Um, He had a great series. He didn't hit any home runs this series. Um, So, of course, some of our other guys, Henderson, Santander, did. Um, But overall, Jordan Westberg, uh, he had the game-winning hit in game two if he didn't have that hit if he struck out that at bat who knows what would have happened in that game maybe the diamondbacks would have escaped and found a way to win so he was uh, a large part of our game two win uh and he also went six for 11 uh overall in the series he had four four rbis he had two walks so he had a really really good series overall of course hitting over 500 uh just with that batting average alone um, so Westberg, I think, is the deserving uh, MVP. Uh, as far as uh, Cy Young in the series, um, this one. So probably, uh, I mean, my my inclination uh, is to give it to Cole Irvin um, just because he he pitched really well. Um, I mean, you could. Maybe there is a bullpen guy. I mean, if you want to give it to the Orioles bullpen collectively, maybe you could do that. But overall, uh, it's going to be Cole Irvin. Um, He did have six strikeouts in his outing, which is a little higher than normal. Of course, on any given start, it's, you know, I guess within probably the standard deviation 
uh, or whatever of what he's capable of and what he's normal to doing. But um, a lot of these starts, he goes out there and even if he pitches really well, uh, he will uh, have two two strikeouts over seven innings or something like that or three or four strikeouts. So um, in this game, he did uh, he had more strikeouts, so he was better in avoiding contact. Um, not that that's always his approach or that he's always trying to avoid contact. A lot of times, I mean, he's not right. He's a guy that pitches to contact in general. Um, but, uh, he definitely had the best start out of the three starters that we had. I mean, Dean Kramer, you could say like stuff wise. Okay. I mean, the 10 strikeouts is pretty glowing on his part, but, uh, even with the airs and stuff like that, the results just weren't there. So, uh, he was also the losing pitcher where Cole Irvin was the winning pitcher, uh, in the game. So I'm going to give it to Cole Irvin for the Cy Young, um, as far as takeaways um, from the series, there was one massive takeaway, I think, that really stood out to me. Um, of course, Jordan Westberg, uh, as I mentioned, uh, if he wasn't the MVP, I would include him uh, in the takeaways here. Um, but uh, the Orioles bullpen did great, had a really great series. Um, I, I have said in the past that in general, I am concerned about the Orioles bullpen. And I think that if there is, if we are looking and examining weaknesses on the team uh, overall, I would look to the bullpen first as one of the facets where the Orioles are weaker. But at a bare minimum, I think at this point, it's pretty fair to say that this is a competent bullpen and it is a bullpen that has room to grow when we add some additional pieces to uh, the mix, right? Like I would expect that the Orioles are going to do something at the upcoming trade deadline. Um, well, I mean, upcoming uh, is being used loosely, right? Because it's not exactly close. We're still a couple months away from that. But uh, the Orioles um, are probably, I think, in position to add a bullpen arm, uh, if not two. Um, at the upcoming, at the next trade deadline, that maybe that's a better way to say it. Um, but overall, this is like an a competent bullpen. It seems like this bullpen is getting uh, the job done, even though this bullpen on paper might not be great, um, or at least uh, maybe that's too much of a stretch to to say that but at least would have some concerns on paper at least um i think you gotta give a lot of credit to brandon hyde also for how he's managing this bullpen and how he's uh utilizing uh the bullpen effectively um because uh they pitched really really well this series um and it is because of this bullpen uh that we are walking away having won two out of the three games uh in game one um, yeah, I mean, in game one, uh, the Orioles had a slim victory, um, only four to two, um, and they had to cover a lot of, uh, a decent amount of ground in that game since Irvin only won five and two thirds. Of course, in game two, uh, the bullpen was the entire reason John Means allowed all four runs and the bullpen just shut it down for the rest of the game and allowed the Orioles to get back into the game and eventually win. And then even in the game, in game three, uh, after uh, the game had gotten away from us, the Orioles put good uh, innings together. Now, in game three, uh, CNL Perez did have that one inning where he relieved uh, Dean Kramer, uh, and he gave up three additional earned runs in that game. Uh, but other than that, this bullpen, this series pitched two and two thirds scoreless innings, which is great. And uh, those three runs that Perez game up gave up didn't end up being consequential. I mean, theoretically, they could have been if the game had stayed where it was and the Orioles came back because of it. But overall, um, Perez is still sort of getting acquainted to the bullpen, too, and, and getting back into the, his rhythm of things. So. Um, you know, I mean, the thing is that, you know, we have to keep in mind that uh, this bullpen, yeah, the 12 and two thirds scoreless innings, maybe it's not noticeable after after a long series and the Orioles just casually sort of 
put up three or three and a third scoreless innings or three and a third and one runs, you know, innings um, sort of on, you know, a somewhat regular basis. Obviously, the bullpen has had issues this year. Um, but overall, like they had a great series this series. And I do think that it is more or less competent. Uh, now, would I want to take this bullpen into the playoffs? No, I wouldn't. But is this a bullpen that I'm comfortable with overall at this early stage in the season? Yes, I'm good with it. And they demonstrated in this series that um, that, you know, they're they're capable and and that they are competent. Um, there are guys that are pitching uh, really like probably a little better than we would expect. Um, but it's working. And I think, like I said, I think some of it has to do with Hyde. Uh, finding the right situations to put guys in overall so far, keeping guys fresh for the most part um, and things like that. So I really think that uh, when looking at this series, we really got to look at the bullpen as the highlight um, and be, uh, you know, maybe some of our unease about where the bullpen uh, was at historically and where has been in the past. Of course, well, last year we had a really good bullpen, but um, some of the concerns and prior feelings, I guess, is what I should say um, about the bullpen, um, you know, maybe should be alleviated in the short term, even though I still do, you know, hold the strong opinion that long term uh, we're going to have to make some more or less structural changes to it. So um, we will see about that, especially if this, uh, you know, is a team that's going to be headed into the playoffs. Um, I'm not sure how comfortable I would be trying, you know, to get through the middle innings with Keegan Akins and and um, Jacob Webb's in the playoffs. Um, so, uh, yeah, so but for right now, like I said, uh, you know, I'm, I'm more or less good with it. So um, so up next, uh, the Orioles have three at home against Toronto. So Toronto is in last place in the American League East. They are 18 and 22. Um, so the pitching matchups, uh, these should be actually really good pitching matchups. I'm excited to see what happens. Um, so Jose Barrios and Corbin Burns are pitching in game one. Of course, uh, both of these pitchers are doing well. Barrios has had problems since coming to the Blue Jays, um, but he's been doing well this year. Kyle Bradish and Chris Bassett are pitching in game two. And then Kikuchi and Irvin are pitching both in game three. So all of those uh, pitchers have been doing well this year. The only exception to that really is Bassett. Um, but we know that he's a very competent pitcher. Um, I mean, the Orioles were interested. Well, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's a little unclear how interested the Orioles were, but he uh, Bassett had definitely been talked about on this podcast um, as being a potential uh, signing for the Orioles in the past. So he's definitely a good and capable and competent pitcher, um, even if he hasn't been great this year. So, uh, yeah, um, we will see what happens. Uh, looking forward to it. I think that um, it is a division matchup. Uh, the Blue Jays, uh, even though they're not doing well, it is sort of, I think, a similar situation to the previous series where the Orioles are hoping to sweep, uh, but would probably be OK or somewhat comfortable with two out of three, especially given the pitching matchups and given that um, the Blue Jays are throwing a couple good pitchers uh, this series. Um, so and, and who knows how they're going to do. Maybe they just shut us down one game and we just can't get it going offensively and we lose. That's possible. Um, so I think uh, the Orioles are probably sort of in that same thing, hoping to sweep, but would probably settle for two out of three um it is it is a division matchup so there is some uh level of importance uh i guess that uh the orioles and we uh, are probably giving and some extra attention uh, that we are giving to this series even though toronto uh is under 500 right now um that does not mean that they're not a capable team uh so you know i definitely don't expect for uh, us to just steamroll them 
and uh, have things be easy uh, this upcoming series, because especially I think they're going to be particularly um, trying to win these games and they're going to have some extra adrenaline going and that sort of thing. So um, we will see how it goes. So uh, this episode of the Warehouse podcast was presented by Bet Online. Uh, please uh, give us a rating, give us a review. Um, please subscribe to us on YouTube and like this video. Feel free to comment any thoughts that you have on the analysis. You can also feel free to uh, email us if you prefer with questions, comments, thoughts, and criticisms at the warehouse pod at gmail.com at gmail.com. Sorry about that. Uh, you can feel free to follow us on X and on Instagram at the warehouse pod. And thank you so much for listening to this episode of the warehouse podcast. My name is Jesse and go O's.